Good afternoon, everyone. I am here at the Anacortes Ferry Landing, and I am here with my new herd mates, Electra and Eli. And I am just back in the United States. Um, I was in oh, UK and then Belgium and then France and then Indiana for a week before I came home. And I am just getting in the ferry line to head back to San Juan Island. Now I know I'm doing tea time at a strange time of day. So many of you guys will see this a little bit later. The schedules just worked out differently so that um, I was driving when it was noon, so here I am. Um, I've come around the trailer here. This is Eli. And Eli is here to teach me about donkeys. I get to learn something about who they are and what they do. Um, he was um, bought at auction by a rescue that friends of mine run. And he is a little bit skittish. He's a little bit hesitant to buy into working with humans. So my schedule worked out in such a way that it made sense for me to take on a couple more animals into my herd. This is temporary. It's probably just for the summer. Um, but we have Eli here and then the mule Electra on the other side of him. We are here at the Anacortes Ferry Landing. You can see the water out behind me. And we'll be getting on a ferry down there in a little while. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit about response-based living. Um, as some of you guys know, it was about a year ago that I lost my mom. And it's been a pretty rough year for me in terms of losing a lot of my family and my animals. And honestly, I have been really focused on my work and my horses and my learning and my study. And that's been really good for me. Um, hi, Joe. Thank you. Um, I'm really glad to be having these two come into my family. As a lot of you know, I lost my mare, Myrna, earlier this year, and that was also a really big shock. I feel like I had a pretty big family of horses not that long ago, and then it became very small. I'm not quite ready to add to my herd in a definite way. Um, so when this rescue asked if I would help with Eli and Electra and getting them a little bit more used to humans and accommodating the human world in a more comfortable way, I took the opportunity to add to my herd in a non-permanent way. So I wanted to talk a little bit about being responsive to the things that come up. Um, a lot of my training is about teaching horses to be thoughtful, teaching them to be considerate, teaching them to think carefully through their options and helping them really be more thoughtful and less reactive. But there's an in-between place that I don't talk about very much and that's about being responsive. So being responsive is different from being reactive. When you're reactive, you usually think about yourself. So it's about fight or flight or freeze. Or if you're human, it might be about fawn, which is more like people pleasing. Um, but these are all reactions that are self-defense reactions. And we don't really want to normalize those. We don't really want to make them the habit. But it is okay to sometimes be response-based. And that is, we don't necessarily make a plan. We don't know why we do something. We don't know um, what the pros and the cons are. It just feels right. And that's very much how it was with taking Eli and Electra the mule on is it felt right. 
Now, normally, for those of you who know me pretty well, I like to be logical. I like a good pros and cons list. I like reasons to do things. I like to know the logic behind everything. And I really like my horses too as well. But sometimes when life gets overwhelming, you don't have the brain space to be fully illogical. Maybe you're overwhelmed. Maybe you're thinking about a lot of things. Maybe a lot's happening. If you don't have the brain space to be fully logical, then I think there's some spot, some, some room in between being responsive and being reactive. And the difference is the level of curiosity you feel about the outcome. So when you're really reactive, you are hoping for a specific outcome. So if a horse goes into flight, their specific outcome is they want to get as far away from the problem as possible. If they go into fight, they usually want the other person or horse to get farther away from them. Um, if they go to freeze, they mentally want to leave so they don't have to deal with it. Um, but if we go to a more response-based way of learning, huh, Eli. if we go to a more response type learning, we are gonna think in terms of if I push into the horse's space in this way, like I just got a little closer here, I don't need Eli to do anything specific for me, but I am curious about how he's gonna respond to that, okay? And so I didn't think, what are the pros and cons of moving closer to Eli? I thought, it just feels right, so I'm gonna try it. And then once I try it, I'm really curious about what the outcome will be. Uh, same thing, if I move a little bit farther away, um, it's not that I want Eli or Electra to do something specific. I want to be curious about what is their natural response to that. And then when I see their natural response, I can go ahead and adapt and use slightly different feel and timing. And at that point, there might be a little bit more logic that comes in. I might start weighing my pros and my cons. I might even think about this video later when I watch it and watch his responses, and that'll help me think about my pros and my cons and my logic behind why I would get closer, when I would get closer, farther away, etc. But there is room in horse training, I think, to be more response-based instead of more thought-based. So right now, with Eli and Electra, you know, I'm outside the trailer, I'm talking to you guys. And um, as Sarah said, Eli is listening. He's listening really carefully. And I'm noticing, you know, if I push my head a little closer, what does he do? If I pull my head a little bit farther away, what does he do? And that's very thoughtful, the curiosity about what happens after I make a choice. But the choice itself, I, ha I don't have a clear idea of what he wants or what he doesn't want, what he's going to respond positively to, what's going to be hard for him. I'm just going to try some things. And then I'm going to respond to what he does and try some different things. At some point, probably when I'm not with him, I will think about it all and I'll be logical and I'll try and educate myself on what I might do next time. But when I'm response-based in the way I live, I'm gonna take an action and be curious about the outcome. I'm not trying to make a specific outcome. And that's different from being really thoughtful about my choices, okay? It's also different from being reactive about my choices. So if you have thoughtful on one side of the spectrum and reactive on the other, responsive is right in the middle. And that's a place that I am exploring more and more where I'm going to look at my horses and be responsive to them in a way that makes them more interested and more curious about what I do next. And so I think that we're off to a good start, start here with Eli. Um, he's getting more interested and more curious about who's this person talking outside the trailer. He's listening really carefully. For those of you who just got here, we are at the Anacortes Ferry Landing. So you can see the water out behind me. 
Hopefully we'll be on the next ferry if I'm lucky. And I'll take you around the trailer and sh introduce you to Electra, who's a beautiful little mule. So this is Electra. Hi, Electra. And you can see she's pretty curious too. Hi. And she's watching all the people go by. We're not really training any specific thing yet, but I am doing my best to be responsive to her as she's watching the people go by, as she's listening to things. So all of this, she reaches towards me, I reach towards her, but then I might pull away as she pulls away. She's gonna look away to sort of lower her anxiety about looking at anything for too long, and then she's gonna look back again. She is being really calmly responsive to her feelings, to the environment, to the place she's in. And this is really good. Does she know exactly what she's going to do next? Probably not. Hopefully in my training, we'll get to a point where she can think through her options, think about the pros and the cons of responding one way or another. I like my horses to be very thoughtful. I like them to be really aware. But if they don't, if they're overwhelmed and they don't know how to be thoughtful, as I get sometimes too, being responsive is a really good alternative. So that's my introduction for all of you guys to Electra. Hi, beautiful. And Eli, they're gonna be with me for the summer and then they will be looking for new homes. So if you're interested, they're really beautiful. Electra is a mule and Eli is a donkey. And they're gonna teach me about mules and donkeys this summer. We're hopefully gonna get them really comfortable around people. And uh, then we will be looking for a long-term home for them. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Mina. Um, yes. These two are going to be good teachers for me. All right, you guys, I'm going to end my talk here, and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get on the ferry shortly and take Eli and Electra home with me. So, I'm going to let you say hello, Eli. Hello, Electra. And uh, we hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. Tuesday Tea Time will be properly on Tuesday next week, and I'll give you a bit of an update on how they're doing. <laughs>